also rescuing the men in the process. In Planet Comics, it was a science fiction series in which the prolific Hopper drew numerous female-driven stories, such as Gail Allen and her all-girls squadron, who were essentially walks of the future and the mist of the moon about a goddess who lived on the moon. The star, the star women cartoonist of fiction house, though, was Lily Renee, who from 1943 to 1948 drew, the, drew the, for the company from Tessie Taxi, The Lost World, Senorita Rio, and The Werewolf Hunters. The Lost World was another science fiction series in Planet Comics, taking place in a post-apocalyptic loans in New York City as Hunt Bowman and his companion Lisa lead a group of survivors against the Nazi-like Voltoman, Green Skin Conquerors. Senator Rio featured in Fight Comics with a Brazilian nightclub entertainer who fought evil in her spare time. It wasn't just female artists who filled the ranks of Fiction House's staff, though, but writers as well. From the 1940, when Ruth Roche was only 20 years old, she went by the name Rod Roche until 1961. She would be Fiction House's first major female writer, along with being an editor. However, by the end of World War II, when many men were turning to their jobs, the women would be forced out, and by 1952, Brenda Starr would be the only strip starring and drawn by a woman. Claire S. Moe drew children's adventure strips in Centaur's Funny Pages, The Circus and Sue, Circus Days, and Little Mary of the Circus in 1938. Also in 1938, Corrine Boyd Dillon produced the strip Jigger, and Gene Hodgkins uh, drew Donnie Stewart, both for the Globe Circus, the Comics Riot. In 1946-1947, the team of Isabel M- M- Manning Houston and Olive uh, Bailey adapted the radio program Land of the Lost, no relation to 1970s TV series by the same name, into a comic book form, chronicling the adventures of Isabel and Billy, two children in an undersea fantasy kingdom, facing off against the villains of Spondo, the uh, leader of the notorious Devilfish and Ura Slug. Throughout the 1940s, V. Quinn Person illustrated a series of strips for Catholic comic books such as Heroes All and Treasure Chests. Distributed to parochial schools and churches, it featured stories of saints and other role models for Catholic children. Hilda Terry was born Teresa Hilda Philman on June 15, 1914 in Newsburyport, Massachusetts. As a child, Hilda admired sports cartoons, particularly the work of Wilfred Mullen. She went to New York to pursue her career while working as a waitress, but reconsidered a career path when she submitted a sports cartoon and a funny cartoon in a newspaper contest, with the funny one winning. Hilda would attend the Art Students League, where one of her teachers, Gregory D'Arlasso, would become her future husband, whom she married in 1938. Hilda soon signed the King's Feature Syndicate, where she drew It's a Girl's Life, which was later featured in Tina in 1941, a teen strip but many missed its debut as it fell as it fell on the fateful day of December seventh, nineteen forty one. Nevertheless, the teen strip would move forward, continuing to nineteen sixty four. After ten years of success, her husband Gregory D'Alessio proposed membership to the National Cartoonist Society in nineteen fifty one, but was denied. The NCS was still an all male organization despite decades of successful women cartoonists. Reportedly, Terry was denied because if a woman was allowed at the meetings, then the men wouldn't be allowed to curse. Hmm, they don't know any of the women I know. However, numerous members of the NCS objected, such as Milton Kniff of Terry the Pirates and Al Cap of Lil Abner, and as a result, a new vote was held where Hilda Terry was finally accepted in the National Cartoonist Society. As soon as her, she was a member, she put forth the names of Gladys Parker and other female cartoonists for, cartoonist for membership, thus fully breaking the gender barrier of the National Cartoon Society. After, the, after the demise of her strip, Terry would go on to pioneer in another field, c- computer animation, when she animated caricatures of Major League Baseball stars for sports stadium scoreboards across the country. Terry, who, who originally wanted to be a sports cartoonist before Tina, had finally achieved her goal. In 1979, she won the Best Animation Cartoonist from the National Cartoonist Society and went on to teach art at the New York, New York Art Students League. In 2001, she was elected to the Friends of Lulu Women Cartoonists Hall of Fame. On October 13, 2006, Hilda Terry passed away at the age of 92, leaving behind a legacy of not only as an co- accomplished cartoonist, but the one who broke the National Cartoonist Society's gender barrier. Marty Lynx did Bobby Socks in 1944 and would join the National Cartoon Society shortly after Hilda Terry. However, despite even sending the announcement of her birth of her first child to the NCS, all correspondence she received from them was still addressed to Mr. Lynx, showing that old habits died hard. 
Her children would be an influence for Lynx, though, as she modeled the messy lifestyle of her comic strip heroine, Emmy Lou, after her teenage daughter. Lynx would retire from the strip in 1979 after her children had grown, claiming she no longer had any information on how they think, moving on to do Hallmark cards. She would continue this work until she was 82 when she retired, but still did watercolor paintings until her death on, June, on January 6, 2008. Linda Walker did Susie Q. Smith for her husband Jerry, which was indicated by King Features. It would later be published by Dell as a comic book. Ruth Atkinson was born on June 2, 1918, in Ontario, Canada, before her family moved to the upstate New York. She originally worked for Fiction House and the Iger Studio in the 1940s. Her first confirmed work was on Wing Comics in number 42 on February of 1944. She would later made art director at Marvel under her editor in chief Stan Lee. Who, who had just returned from serving in World War II. Atkinson also created and drew Millie the Model and Patsy Walker, the latter which she would stay on with for two years. Atkinson would retire after getting married and, and eventually passed away on June 1, 1997, at the age of 78. Her creation, Patsy Walker, would later become the character Hellcat at Marvel and most recently featured on the Jessica Jones Netflix series. Marvel also printed Taffy, a two-page advice strip by Phyllis McCall in 1946. Violet Barclay was born on November 5, 1992, in New York City, New York. She attended the School of Industrial Art in high school, which fellow cartoonists, which had fellow cartoonist Alan Bellman, and later the School of Visual Arts. She got her first job in comic books with Mike Sudelsky, a fellow industrial art alumni and penciler at Timely, the future Marvel, met her at the Cafe Rose, where she was working as a waitress for $18 a week. Sudelsky said he could get her a job inking for $35 a week, and she could also freelance for extra money. There was just one problem. Barclay didn't know how to ink. So they actually said that wouldn't be a problem. Staff artist Gantz would just teach her on the job. Barclay started out inking funny animal stories like Super Rabbit and Ziggy the Pig and the Silly Seal, along with Nellie the Nurse, though her credits are hard to track down as most were enlisted at the time. Her relationship with Mike Sadelsky soured, though, as despite being married, he would still give her expensive gifts to her, and when she didn't return his affections and even dated a, time, a different Timely artist, Mike Sadowski reportedly went to Stan Lee to have her fired. According to Barclay, Sadowski told Lee that either Barclay was fired or he would quit, and since you couldn't tell Stan Lee what to do, he told Sadowski, it's been nice working with you. Thankfully for Barclay, she had established a reputation as a talented inker, with Stan Lee himself citing Violet Barclay for her inks in, on Rusty in his 1947 book, The Secrets Behind the Comics. Barclay was one of the many women cartoonists influenced by Nell Brinkley as a child. Working at Marvel, she preferred romance comics over cartoony ones, as she was able to draw beautiful women. She would later move on to do illustrations for the New York City agencies and portraits when she left Timely in 1949, working freelance for DS Publishing, DC Comics, American Comics, and so forth. However, the downturn in the 1950s forced her to return to working as a waitress and a hostess before returning to art as a fashion illustrator, providing art for such chains as Land Brandt and Abram and Strauss. She studied art and painted to her dying day on February 26, 2010, at the age of 87. Lillian Chesney was born on September 26, 1913. She studied art in New York, where she attended the Pratt Institute and Art Students League of New York City. Chesney would work as a cartoonist during the 1940s and 50s, working for classic comics for such work as Gulliver Travels and Arabian Nights. Chesney would also work in advertisements and children's books and later produce watercolor paintings. She passed away on August 6, 2000 at the age of 86, with much of her original comic books still highly valued. Mernon Gamble also adapted The Tale of Two Cities for National Comics, which would later become DC. Dottie Keller did funny animal strips for Timely, later Marvel, of course, while Etta Parks did Red Rabbit, a funny animal parody book of the comic book Red Rider, along with from 1949 to 1951. She would later work under her married name, Etta Hume, doing editorial cartoons for the Fourth Wharf Star Telegram. Hume worked was born on December 22, 1923, graduating from the University of Texas with a fine arts degree and later working at Walt D Disney Animation Studios under the tutelage of Ward Kimball, one of the legendary Nine Old Men animators. She later did freelance work for the Texas Observer. Hume made a name for herself as a political cartoonist who would later win the National Cartoon Society Award for Editorial Cartoons in 1981 and in 1998. She, would later, she was later elected the president of the American Association of Editorial Cartoonists, noted for being one of the few successful female editorial cartoonists at the time. 
when there was only like five or six in the 1980s. Human published cartoons uh, up until 2008 before passing away on June 25th of 2014 at the age of 90. Christine Little, under the married name Christine Smith, applied for work at Western Printing and Lithography, which produced comics for both Dell and Whitman. However, being told that the company didn't hire women, she, she instead would put, did work doing erasures and corrections for six weeks before she was finally allowed to draw. At Western, Smith drew novelty pages, comics, and the inside of the comic book covers such as Roy Rogers, Little Lulu, Tarzan, along with the Walt Disney books like Mickey Mouse's Almanac. Silly Symphonies, and The Sleeping Beauty. However, Smith will remain uncredited for most of it outside of I Love Lucy coloring books she did in 1959. And we will once again leave you for there, uh, but we'll return again next week for the third and concluding chapter of this history of American female cartoonist, as we will get to arguably one of the most popular uh, American female cartoonists in history. And now it is January 16th, 2020, time for the favorite comic book of the week. Grindel, Devil's Odyssey, number three, by Matt Wagner, which finds Grindel Prime on search for yet another uh, new planet for humanity to inhabit in the future, this time having a flows in the world with a dark secret. Wagner once again crashed another fun and exciting issue, this time with Grindel Prime not only discovering this strange alien world, but also having a flashback that highlights both his uh, commitment to the Empire and his honor streak in general. It's matched perfectly by his great art, which is, be- which is beautifully detailed alien worlds, also some d- dynamic action. All in all, plus a really great cliffhanger, this is one of the more fun and entertaining uh, comic books you can get in the stands right now. Plus, I finally got caught up on uh, the Preacher series, which uh, the, the last uh, season, season four, dropped on Hulu. And I have to say, this is a pretty faithful uh, adaptation of the classic comic book by uh, Garfinis and the late, great Steve Dillon. It has the great, crazy, irreverent humor and over-the-top violence and some great uh, acting by Dominic Cooper as uh, Jesse Custer slash the title character Preacher. Matched perfectly by Ruth Nager as uh, Tulip. Just a lot of fun from beginning to end. If you like the comic book series, you won't be disappointed by this. It is a bit of an acquired taste, just like the comic book. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, with some of uh, the pictures of Christianity that someone have a problem with, hey, as a, as a Christian myself, I didn't have much problem with it. Of course, I love the comic book, too. So, yeah, definitely check it out. Uh, if you have Hulu, it would uh, be a great binge. It's one of the better uh, comic book adaptations in the recent years. All right, with that, uh, that is the second part of our history of female creators in American comic books. Join me again next week for the concluding uh, third part. And until then, go out and enjoy yourself a good comic book.